In this lecture, we will talk about capacitor impedance. Here is the differential equation of an ideal capacitor. In this course, I will now solve any time domain differential equation solutions based on initial conditions. Instead, we will run transient analysis in LT spice for time domain simulation. In this course, we focus on impedance in AC frequency domain analysis because AC impedance provides practical design methods for engineers. It is easy to solve by simple algebra. It provides good insights into circuit analysis. Laplace transform. Now we have time domain differential equation of a capacitor. We ignore the initial voltage of a capacitor and focus on the voltage change dV over dt. Now we can think this capacitor as a linear time invariant system. This means the output voltage is the same no matter when you apply the input voltage excitation. In order to convert the equation to a frequency domain, we need to use Laplace transform. Laplace transform is an integral transform that converts a function of time t in time domain to a function of a complex number s in the frequency domain, where s is a complex variable s equals to sigma plus j omega. The real part of a complex number s is sigma, and the imaginary part is omega. Here, j is the imaginary unit equals to the square root of minus 1. We can express the complex number in a complex plane. If we draw a circle at origin with magnitude of 1, there are two intersections at y-axis, which are plus j and minus j. In AC analysis, we can simply use s variable equals to j omega and set sigma as 0. I will explain why in these following slides. The block diagram shows a LTI or linear time invariant system with input excitation x of t and output a response y of t. If the input x of t equals to exponential of s t, then the output particular solution is, is also in the form of h of s times e to the power of s t. h of s represents the linear transfer function of the system. We can rewrite the exponential of s of t in terms of exponential of sigma t times exponential of j omega t. Using the Euler formula, we can rewrite the second part of exponential equation as cosine omega t plus j sine omega t. Notice that this is a pure sinusoidal waveform with magnitude s1. Now here's the problem, exponential of sigma t. If sigma is now zero and the exponential of sigma t changes over time, the response is difficult to analyze in frequency domain. To illustrate the effect of sigma over time, we have two different examples in 3D plot. On the left hand side, we have sigma equals to minus 0 0.2, omega is 5 radius per second. We have a 3D plot of time axis, real axis, and imaginary axis. You can see that because sigma is minus 0 0.2, exponential of minus 0 0.2 decays over time, therefore the function becomes smaller and smaller over time. It does not have any steady state and becomes difficult to analyze. On the right hand side, we have sigma as zero. Therefore, we only have the exponential of j omega t left, and it gives a steady state sinusoidal waveform. According to Euler formula, the real part is the cosine waveform, and the imaginary part is the sine waveform. This is a pure AC waveform, and it's easy for frequency analysis. So as a conclusion, we focus on the sinusoidal steady state behavior of the system so that we can set sigma as zero and simply use s equals to j omega in s domain analysis. Capacitor impedance. Now we can apply the Laplace transform on this differential equation and use s variable as j omega and sigma as zero. Finally, we can write the s domain equation as i sub c equals to c times s times v sub c. Notice that the variable is s. We have converted the time domain t variable into the s domain using s variable. The capacitor impedance is found as voltage over time equals to 1 over s c. Notice that s is j omega. Omega equals to 2 pi times f. f is the frequency in hertz. 
impedance is expressed in dB ohm in the body plot of impedance graph. This equation has been introduced in the previous lectures. We can use R base as 1 ohm and convert impedance into dB ohm using the equation as shown here. In this slide, I will show you the steps to draw a body plot in the semi-log plot. First, we write down the equation of the capacitor impedance in dB or dB ohm. For this example, we have a capacitor as 0.1 microfarad. By using the impedance in dB ohm, we can find the impedance magnitude equals to minus 2 pi f over 1 ohm in dB ohm plus 1 over c in dB ohm. The equation has two parts. The first part is reducing as frequency increases. If frequency increases by 10 times, the impedance in dB ohm will be reduced by 20 dB ohm. Therefore, the magnitude has a slope at minus 20 dB per decade. The frequency at 0 dB or magnitude is 1 ohm is defined as the crossover frequency or so-called 0 dB crossing frequency. Now we have the frequency f sub c equals to 1 over 2 pi times c found as 1.59 MHz. We know the slope and the zero crossing frequency so that we can draw the magnitude plot as shown here. The phase is always minus 90 degree over all the frequency because we have j in the denominator equals to minus j which is minus 90 degree. So you can see the phase is always minus 90 degree, which means there's a phase delay at capacitor voltage compared with capacitor current. In the following slides, I will show you how to draw capacitor impedance body plot using Python. On the left-hand side, we have the Python code. First, you need to install the Python control system library in your PC. After that, you can simply run this code to import the control module and use function of body plot to draw the impedance. On the right-hand side, we can see this is the impedance we have found in the previous slides. We see the crossover frequency at 0 dB about 1.59 MHz. In addition to Python, we have LTSpice to run AC analysis. We want to see the impedance of an ideal capacitor. This is the same setup as we used to find impedance in previous lectures. We have a current source with AC amplitude 1 amp. The AC current flows into the capacitor and we can measure the capacitor voltage over frequency from 1 Hz to 10 MHz. The capacitor voltage has the same magnitude as the impedance since the AC amplitude is 1 amp. Here it shows the AC analysis results. The solid line is for magnitude. The dotted line is for phase. We can see the magnitude has minus 20 dB per decade slope and uh, about 1.59 MHz at 0 dB, which is our zero crossing frequency. The phase is always minus 90 degree over the frequency range because this is an ideal capacitor. So this is a summary for this plot. We have zero dB zero crossing at F sub C. At DC or low frequency, the impedance is very large. That means the capacitor looks like a high impedance at low frequency, but it becomes low impedance at higher frequency. The so magnitude slope is minus 20 dB per decade. The phase is always minus 90 degree. This is the transient simulation using a sinusoidal AC current source. We feed this current source into the capacitor. This is the similar setup as we did in the AC analysis. If you right click over this current source, you can see this is the sinusoidal setup. We have amplitude 1 amp, frequency at 1 megahertz. DC offset is zero. Now let's run the simulation for four microsecond. If you run the simulation, you can see the plot. The red one is the capacitor voltage. The green trace is the capacitor current or the AC current into the capacitor. First, we can see that the amplitude for the current is 1 amp. And the voltage on the capacitor has higher voltage because the impedance is slightly over 1 ohm at 1 megahertz.
Remember that we focus on the AC magnitude in this analysis. We can ignore the DC bias. You can see that the capacitor voltage in red has 90 degree delay than the input current in green. Remember that a full cycle is 2 pi equals to 360 degree. 90 degree is one quarter of the full cycle. You can see the minus 90 degree phase delay on voltage compared with the input current. Recap, in this lecture we talked about Laplace transform and how to use them in finding the capacitor impedance. We understand why S variable is j omega and we can set sigma as zero. The impedance of an ideal capacitor over frequency is discussed and we draw the body plot using Python and the AC analysis in LTSpice. In addition, we did some transient simulation using LTSpice to show you the waveform and current into the capacitor. In the future, I will show you non-ideal realistic model of capacitors. Thank you and see you next time.